Good evening, good evening, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and all of those particular things. How are you guys doing? How are you? How are you? How are you, honey? I am Big Meech, and this is a Big Meech moment. Listen, I wanted to come to you very quickly because I have finally seen Black Panther 2 Wakanda forever, okay? I treated myself to the movies yesterday morning because I like to be there early in the morning, honey, when there's nobody really there and I could really get into the movie. Um, But I had a few folks there, you know, and we had a good time. Let me say this. This movie is absolutely spectacular. Okay? absolutely spectacular okay and i say that uh because it is number one number two there's a lot of messages in this particular movie that i took away from it um that i think many folks may have overlooked or whatever the critics who have just been um just what what's the word i want to say i want to want to say heinous i want to say just very probable to the people with this shit y'all get on my goddamn nerves okay um but before i get into why y'all on my nerves let me start with just saying that um the film itself has dealt with what does it mean to reconstruct yourself when the person who was deemed to be your protector, the savior, the one that everybody's looking to for guidance and and all of that, when that person has uh, left or is deceased, okay, how do we rebuild? How do we recapture who we are as a people, our sense of pride, our sense of dignity. How do we get back and return to the nucleus of who we are? Because everything seems to be in disarray. Um, And many of us experience that when we have death in the family, particularly when the matriarch or the patriarch passes. In my case, y'all know I've dealt with the loss of my mother last year. Um, In fact, we just had, what, November 5th was when we lost my mom and it still hurts. It still feels like it's fresh. And oftentimes we don't know what's going on. So in the movie, dealing with the loss of uh, T'Challa, you know, um, the impact was very real. And all of the emotions that the villages and the tribes are going through is felt because he was the Black Panther. He was the one that, that became the chosen one or whatever. What are we going to do? There's a lot of of oversight. Well, not oversight. That's not the right. That's not the right word. There's a lot of there's a lot of insight into dealing with those emotions. What I want to say is they covered it because what we got is different tribes going through what they were going through in order to um, want to preserve the integrity of the land and of Wakanda. Okay. Um, to know that what you were once told, you know, to believe the folklore, to believe the myth, to believe stories, and then you find out that what what you have learned, the very essence of your being and the very core of your of your stories are now uh, eradicated because they they wasn't necessarily true. To know that Namor done came in, honey, there's another whole world where vibranium and carrying on exists we were always told how did that vibranium only exists on wakanda well not necessarily so anymore we have a whole underworld okay where what vibranium exists in fact it's the core of this particular world okay so now your very existence of who you are, all of your stories, all of your brilliance, all of your everything is now in challenge. So what does that mean to everybody else? Here, Wakanda thought that they were impenetrable, okay? 
Uh, that's not the right word. I'm, I'm not, I'm not impenetrable. Okay. That's going to be the word right now. Um, because of who they are, but Namor and them came through and was able to break through the shields. Why? Because they too are empowered and enriched with, with the vibranium technology and things of that nature. Right? So we have a lot of that to contend with. When Queen Romanda, mm, come on, Angelo. When she came through and told the UN, honey, okay, no, you guys have been trying to come on us for um, ever and a day. We haven't waged war on y'all and this, that, and the other, but you keep coming from it, but y'all keep fucking around, see? And we will have to tap that ass. That was brilliant. We have, uh, we have a sense of, okay, the matriarch now, who's the queen, now has to step in and, and take control of the land because the Black Panther's not there anymore, right? So now she's controlling, she's running. So now when you have her, then you got Jabari tribe, honey, who has sworn allegiance to her, okay? Because, of, you know, they helped, they helped get T'Challa back when they were dealing with all that in the first movie. Now we have this allegiance, and so now you have this primitive, okay, tribe, who, is, who really is not about traditions and care and all, but now they're they're trying to come around and you know be a part of a part of everything, uh, being the voice of reason, trying to make sure that when acting as you know protectors of Wakanda, while you still have the Dora Milaje, um, who now you know they 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 were sworn to protect the the the, the, the throne. So now they're there to protect the queen and this, that, and that. It is very, very intense as far as dealing with emotions. You have uh, Shuri, who has to deal with her rage. She's upset. She's mad at God. She's mad. Okay, I have all of this, this, this intelligence that we have this technology, and I could not save my brother. I could not save him. And how many of us have always felt that way? You know, for those of us who are doctors and lawyers or whatever the case may be, and those of us who, who are rich in faith, and you say, oh, I'm a pray, I'm a pray, I'm a pray, and I believe God is going to make this happen and blah, blah, blah. But when it's time to leave this world, honey, one thing about life is that nobody gets out alive. Uh, nobody gets out of this thing alive, baby. We all have to, you know, prepare ourselves for whatever that next expression of living is and it's always going to hurt and and carry on because we still here and you know i want my mom i want those who have lost and can't still be here with me but it's that time and i know that time is going to come for me to transition and and go be with the ancestors and carry it on or become an ancestor you know so we all have to channel those emotions and things the movie itself is basically about self-doubt because um, no one wanted to take the helm of the Black Panther. Everybody thought that, okay, well, you know, just because he has all these abilities or whatever, you know, it doesn't make sense because it didn't protect him. So you have doubt. You have uh, a sense of, of wanting to be loyal to the throne, loyal to your mom, but then you also had deception. She did a lot of shit that she had no business doing because she was being fueled by anger and rage and wanted to take care of this and wanted to get into the fight and wanted to this and wanted to that, you know, being childlike in her thinking, but yet being innovative at the same time. Okay. You find that in her defiance of her mother and carrying on, we also found that, you know, she was also the one to get the wisdom and the understanding of, of this new world. Okay, and I'm gonna get fuck up the name of the. I'm, I'm not. I'm taking the underwater kingdom because I can't. I'm gonna fuck up the name. Uh, Talakokin, Talahokin. I'm. I, I told you I won't tear it up. Um, but then we find this beautiful place where I, I get another race of people, brown folks. See what I love about the movie. We got black and brown folks that, that came together, blacks uh, from the African diaspora. And, you know, you have these children, honey, who are of, uh, you know, Latin and Mexican descent and carried on, honey, who had, to cre who had to take and create, you know, what was, you know, something out of nothing. They created a beautiful underwater paradise, okay? that they were protecting. But again, the similarities are 
here we have two black and brown people. They basically have almost the same story. Okay, nuances are a little different, of course, because this is a different experience. But the idea that the outside world does not want to accept me, trying to come from my resources, coming to from my very existence, think that I'm a threat when I'm not because they're afraid to understand who I am, you know? And then, wanting, because we are here, now catch this, because we're here and basically sharing some some similar experiences or our experiences are congruent with one another. I want you to partner with me so we can take them down. Strike first. Fuck all this. Let's get them before they get us. And we're like, no, we need to have a peaceful resolve. Well, now because I'm asking for peace, you mad. And now you want to forge war. No, either y'all going to be with us or not, because we need to know if you're on our side or not. How many of us have been through that? Where, and we do this all the time with our friends, don't we? You get mad at somebody, and because your friends are your friends, everybody's supposed to be mad at the bitch you mad at. Okay. Everybody's supposed to be mad at them. They ain't supposed to fuck with them. They ain't supposed to do nothing because you mad, right? Same difference. It's the same kind of principle, the same concept. Okay. And then in an act of doing what I know to do, and that's I came to come and save the princess, okay, it end up creating war unnecessarily. How many times have we done that? You know, somebody running their mouth, saying something or whatever, or, or doing something that ends up kicking shit into overdrive unnecessarily because they didn't understand. All they know is I came in, the rushing in. How many times have we done that when oh, somebody jumped to a conclusion? All you heard was part of the damn story. You come in and now you want to neck roll and flip and this, that, and the other. Don't know shit from Shinola. Except for the part, the sound bite. We do this all the time on social media. Don't we get a sound bite? And we read the headlines and don't nobody go through the story. We run it with the sound bite, just a little piece of the headlines or whatever this is. And we run with it. This is what happened here. Without, without telling you what happened, I'm just, I'm, you know, for those of you who have not seen the movie. Um, but we have all of that to contend with. Uh, there's another message up in here of, you know, wanting to support the elders. When when you go to the council and the elders are giving their wisdom, but yet you hear the fear in the elders. You hear that we have we don't know what to do. So no, you know, let, let's give them what they want so we can be done. You, you know, how many times have we heard that? You know, for those of y'all who don't know how to deal with children, oh, just give babies what they want so they can stop crying. You know, that whole kind of that concept but how many of us do that with teenagers and young adults because they're grown or whatever and you don't want to be getting in the way how many of us have let our communities that be dilapidated because we were afraid to challenge the young folks because they got guns they got dead they're gonna come and tear my house up if i say something snitches get stitches so don't nobody want to be the the, the neighbor to protect the neighborhood you know and carry it on so it's the same concept right and in dealing with that um, we, we also are forced to deal with uh, so, some of our own little idiosyncrasies and our own little prejudices and our own fears, you know, that has to that has to be resolved. How do we resolve it? How do we do this? We also find out that, hey, I'm not the only smart young person or whatever, because, see, we have a new baby that's introduced, honey, who is a, um, a genius. Okay, in, in science and technology and carrying on. As a matter of fact, you know, something that she did as a school project ended up becoming what the the government is looking for. The government pimped her to get her little machine or whatever to go try to find the vibranium and this, that, and the other. So now this baby don't know what the hell she did. The government done used her and carried on and not put her life in jeopardy because of her machine. The children trying to come after her. And now she don't know what the hell is going on, okay? So now we have, you know, a surface dweller, if you will, or somebody on, on the outside of Wakanda who now has been given access to the secrets of Wakanda. You understand? 
And so now they've forged an alliance and carried on. And, and, and what she's been able to do has been absolutely remarkable. So now we have the whole, the idea of black women intelligence, black strength, black female strength or whatever. And here's why I'm going to come with my power to the people children, because those of y'all who got, who have criticized the movie, I've heard this one particular girl on, on, uh, YouTube. What, what I can't recall her name right now. Um, where all the men? This a poor. Wow. This ain't nothing but woman king on steroids, and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, okay, let's let's understand this. Number one, we're talking about a fucking fictional place. Okay, this is a this here is a fucking cartoon. Okay, the Black Panther is a cartoon. Okay. Now, the beauty of it is, is that if we learn how to take the messaging and carry on of this, we can apply some of this to life. And some of y'all who are naysayers are going to say, well, how is it that the message is, is this? And the girl said, up there and said how a 135 pound girl go sit down there and, and, and whoop a 250 plus pound man like that. That's bullshit. She took the serum, fool. That's what she's supposed to. That's what it was. She became the fucking Black Panther. Okay, she has superhuman strength. Hello. Superhuman strength. Where the men was weak. Where are the men? The men were there. But if you pay attention to the goddamn story, honey, it's always been the Black Panther was the protector and the Dora Milaje, honey, they are the Amazons. They are the protectors of the crown and of the throne. I don't know what this is about all of you who want to sit down there and not give the movie what it is. Nobody want to deal with black women empowerment. Nobody wants to deal with the fact that there's black women intelligence and carrying on. Y'all same bitches who want to sit up there and say, oh, we need to protect the black woman, protect the black woman. Now we have something that's empowering black women. And now you say, oh, ain't no me in there. Y'all man, because ain't no motherfucking me in there. But let me ask y'all this, because, okay, you're entitled to that. And I, and, and I can kind of understand why you there. Let me, I can understand that, okay? I can say, okay, I see your point. Not that I agree with it, but I see where you are. But here's what I'm going to ask you, bitches. Where are your production companies? Where are your products, okay? Where are your films that's going to offset what you say Hollywood is doing? Since Hollywood is making a, a mockery of black men, since Hollywood is only dealing with effeminate sissies and carrying on and this, that, and the other, since Hollywood is sitting up there destroying the image of the black man and, and, and possessing this narrative of weak black, the men in that, they were just weak. They couldn't do shit. Where are your production companies and where are your products that's going to give us a balance, show us what the fuck black men are supposed to be? Because see, let me ask, let me tell you this. See, prior to Wakanda, and the, because see, you didn't like the first Black Panther, when when the first one came out and we had T'Challa as the Black Panther, y'all was mad about that. Oh, he ain't really black. He stood up there and let the colonizer win and, and the killmonger should have been. That's the one that got the real message. Fuck all y'all. Okay? Fuck all of y'all. Okay? Because you y'all and this whole thing and y'all Malcolm X bullshit when you ain't. Where are your products, honey? Where are you? We got a whole bunch of platforms to where you can write a script. You can sit down there and put it up here on YouTube or whatever. You can create your own shit that's going to give us the balance and, and show us what you say should be the image of what black men are supposed to be and how the king is supposed to be this, 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 and this. Okay. Where's your shit? Because we so busy talking about what the fuck everybody else is doing and how Hollywood this and how Hollywood that. Okay. And in some regard, you may be correct. But my, my, my challenge to you is stop all this motherfucking bullshit talk and create something that's going to give the balance. You didn't like Tyler Perry. Oh, he's sitting up there cooning around and carrying on a blah, 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 blah. But okay, so what? Okay, so what? If he's doing all that, where are your products? Uh, uh, 
to offset that. Okay, where are they? Huh? Where are they? Since since you say everything is everything, honey. Okay. Since you want to sit down there and go through all this, where's your shit? Huh? Where is your shit? That's what I want to hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm going to give y'all something I want to, um, that I want y'all to see because when this hit, this became an issue as well. And I was like, really? And and it became an issue for what? Okay, for what? Nothing. Okay, y'all said that y'all done jump chipped on this and ch- <laughs> y'all said up here, y'all done, y'all, done, oh, y'all, y'all done lost y'all motherfucking minds on this right here. Okay, lost your minds on this. Let me show you. <laughs> okay, now, yes, this is a parody. Yes, this here is an awful fun and games, and who knows, honey. Okay, Medea just might take her black ass to Wakanda, you know, for the comedy version of it. I hope she does it because I, I, I really and truly don't want to see necessarily that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it, it would destroy the integrity of what Wakanda is about. Um, but you know, y'all lost your minds when y'all saw this. Okay, but let me give y'all a little pointers because if many of y'all don't know this, honey. Wakanda is Tyler Perry. Why do I say that? Because the goddamn movie was shot at Tyler Perry Studios. The stuff that was done here in America, most of their shots were done right here at Tyler Perry Studios. So Medea and Tyler Perry are already Wakanda. Okay? So we got a black director who took all these black actors with a black costume with a black musical director carrying on, went to a black studio to shoot the damn movie. Okay. And that ain't enough for my power to the people children because now it's too much woman shit. And it's unbelievable that these women are warriors and how they can sit down here and fight. And if you pay attention to the fight scenes, honey, their women wasn't, it wasn't like they were just these exceptional superhuman strength women. They wasn't, a, they wasn't like it was superhero like Wonder Woman or Storm. It wasn't that. You had women who were trained fighters who was getting their ass whipped in a lot of them cases. Her them bitches were taking them hits. Okay? They were taking them hits and you know, getting knocked around the way they, that a man was going to hit a woman, but they stood their ground and they took that shit. Going back to Woman King, y'all got mad about that. But when I went to go see that honey, listen, Viola took that ass whooping. That man was whooping her ass, but she was whooping his ass right back as she outsmarted him for the win. She outsmarted him, out, out-warriored him and carried on and got the win. Same with the warriors here in the movie but that's that's not enough for y'all to understand that a woman knows how to care for herself that's too much and for all of y'all who say the power to the people children who want to believe that this is an affront to the essence of black men and carrying on y'all can't understand that again where are your products put it together create it Show me what supposedly taking care of the black king is supposed to look like. Show me the armies of men that's supposed to be there. That's 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 the the male version of the Dorm uh, the Dora Milaje. Huh? Since you got a problem with that. Because see, when we had all y- y'all were not this up and on when we had all these goddamn gangster movies and all of the damn Nino Browns are carrying on with all the strong black men with all the goddamn hood rats and shit. See, if you really want to know something, I want to bring back when we had Shaft and 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 Jim Brown and all of his characters, when we had uh Fred Williamson and all his characters. Okay, the black men from the 70s that carried on that were, you know, the detectives, the 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 the, the super spies and this, that, and the other. When they went in and kicked ass, got the bitch honey and carried on, they had all the pretty women and things, you know what I'm saying? I said, hell, even Dolomite 
okay, was 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 able to go in and kick ass and carry on and still got the women to carry on as gay as he was, <laughs> allegedly. Okay. So, child, come on. If y'all want to criticize it, baby, then give me the balance of it. This movie is absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. And now it's it's funny that y'all paid attention to the black children, but y'all didn't pay attention to the Mexican children and the Latin Latino children who were the underwater bitches that was kicking ass. Huh? Yeah, they had the big one that 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 uh uh, what's my girl? What's 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 the main girl in the Dora Milaje? Oh, Oloku, I can't call her name. Uh, that she was fighting, okay. And he whooped her up on a couple of occasions, okay, until she got it together. And on that last one, she got him right. But y'all don't talk about the the, the Latina women, honey, who set up their whooping ass. Okay, came through there like bats out of hell, honey. No, no, they came through there like sharks out of water, barracudas out of water and were kicking ass, but nobody talked about them. Everybody, everybody, they're all talking about, oh, this is the black children and no oh, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Get over yourselves, babies, please. Okay. This here is a comic book. Okay. It's a comic book. <laughs> okay. That sat down there and that took us into realms that were nobody. How about this? Nobody even talking about how Killmonger was the ancestor that came back to see Zuri when she went up under the trance to become the Black Panther. You know, when she drink and she go to the ancestral realm. Nobody talked about that Killmonger was the one that she saw. And that message that y'all want to say about, oh, he was the one with the message that he was the one, blah, 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 blah. How about nobody discovered that, that, that Shuri's fear now her fear, her fury was motivated by him because now you realize that you and your cousin have something in common, rage. Understanding what that means to want to go and get the children who did you wrong. You want to wipe out the wrong because your brother is no longer here. Your village is under attack. You want to go wipe that out because you're hurt. You're mad, you're confused, un trying to understand why. Ain't that what Killmonger did in the first one? He came back because he was upset that his birthright was taken from him because his uncle killed his brother, his father rather. His uncle, Killmonger's uncle killed Killmonger's father. How about that? You killed your own damn brother. I don't even know how to handle that. Okay, all in the name of Wakanda. Really? So Wakanda got secrets. How many family secrets that we got? Hmm? How many secrets we got in our families that carry on that we keep under wraps? Don't keep, don't put my business in the street. See, I'm telling y'all, when I break it down, it, it, there's a lot of lessons up in here that we can apply. But I have to remember, this is still a fucking comic book. Okay, this is a comic book that's made for entertainment. And for those of y'all who... Want to act all crazy about, okay, why the women, why the women? Make your own product. Now, I'm going to tell you what did surprise me. What did surprise me is that as primitive as the Jabari tribe is, I won't necessarily say that they were weak. What I will say is, is that they, are, they were more bark than bite. Ah. A lot of them, a lot of the people of the Jabari, you know, they got all that bark and a lot of people on Wakanda were afraid of them because of their primitive nature. See, but then you have somebody come who wasn't who 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 was about that life, basically. Okay, how many of us have experienced that when the big bully honey got all that bark? But when you hit that motherfucker, the one that got all the mouth, and you hit him in the mouth, then what happens? Everybody else behind him back the fuck down, don't they? Well, in this case, in the movie, they didn't necessarily back down, but what it was is their leader got hit and hit hard. So now what? Was he weak? No, he wasn't weak because he was whooping ass out there. Thing of it was, he got comfortable thinking that he was impenetrable. Impenetrable. That's the impenetrable. I get it right. Okay. And that that tagged his ass. Tagged his ass hard. 
So now what you got to go back and reevaluate, don't you? Huh? More training is needed. Right. Huh? Okay. So there's a lot that came about of that. Okay. And, and check it. What I love about it at the end was how all the tribes came together. Like, fuck this. This is for the kingdom. This is us. We're here and we're going to get ready to do this. Okay. But I'm going to give y'all this and this is going to be a spoiler. This is going to be a spoiler. At the end, when Wakanda saw that they were outnumbered, and you sitting up there, you can't best them necessarily because all of y'all on y'all got the same weaponry, the same technology, and carrying on. But basically, what we have here, we got we got ocean dwellers and folks who know how to survive under the water, who know how to pull the air from the sky in order to breathe in a dual existence fighting somebody who's only been on the surface land don't know how to don't know how to breathe and live up under the water see so because you have that well commas were getting their asses whooped and could have been taken over had it not been for the black panther who came to make peace instead of using that fury because had she had killed Namor, okay, it could have been the end of something, but it would have caused something else. And as Namor said, listen, that is the most powerful being on this in this world. And us becoming allies make us even stronger than what we are. How about that? See, that's the understanding when, okay, listen, we don't have to fight like this. We can sit down here and join forces together so that we can keep the outside world from fucking with us. We sit, we take care of our own shit, but we for the truce and say, hey, this is us. We ain't gonna do this. We ain't gonna do it like this no more. We can come to the table because they realize that they know how to talk. Namor and Shuri had a wonderful conversation and they realized they could talk in peace and they could settle and they, they came to a head. They came to a head, not necessarily in agreement, but they came to a head and they knew that they could sit down and talk. Okay, so we could do it like this, you know, bring our technology because we're the only ones that have this technology. So what does that mean? The earth, the, the, the land dwellers and the sea dwellers, honey, come together. That's two of the elements of uh, water and earth. Now, how about that? Now, let's get um, wind and fire. Ha! Huh? Okay. And call it grace, right? That there was beautiful. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to tell the backstory of the name, the, the kingdom. I'm, I'm going to tell the name up again uh, of the underworld, uh, Namor's underworld, how, how they came to be, whatever. That was a beautiful thing. I love how we have all of the cultures of the African culture and the Mexican culture, you know, all of that. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's more that come up out of that. Okay, there's so much more that come up out of that. Okay. And I hope that when you go and see this, that anything that I've said here will help open your eyes to it. It may not change your opinion if you want to empower to the people, children. But I'm hoping that when you go in, that you go in with a, with a broader viewpoint of what could come out of this movie, okay? Make sure you stay after the credit, the first set of credits, because they got a little another clip. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I just know it brought me to tears, ha. Huh? Okay, it brought me to tears because there's something special there, okay? And then also, uh, let's look at the richness of, of our cultures. Let's look at the richness of the cultures and get into it, honey. Get into it. For those of us who have this whole Black Latino thing and don't realize how similar we are because we're actually the same people, okay? We're actually the same people, <laughs> okay? Just coming from two separate... We Listen, when we was on the boat traveling, honey, we done went over here, made a couple babies here, made a couple babies there, but we all the same people. Okay, we all the same people, but when you listen at the stories and carrying on, okay, listen to name more story, how he became who he is, okay, and why his rage was fueled. Yeah, lovely. 
All right, that there is that time. I'm gonna let you guys get back to your world or whatever, honey. This is Big Meech, and well, I am Big Meech rather, and this here is a Big Meech moment, honey. Wakanda forever. Ah, dig it. Ah, <laughs> yes.